Well, they were calling for an October surprise, and well, we just got it. The October surprise bombshell. The New York Times is freaking out about it today because of what it says and what it means for the Kamala Harris campaign. Of course, they work in lockstep in the liberal media, and it's absolutely devastating. A lot of people wondering, was it going to be World War III in the Middle East? Is it a terrorist attack in the United States? What exactly is it? And guess what? It's the economy, stupid, as James Carville once said for the Bill Clinton campaign. Keep it focused on the economy. And this bombshell is absolutely devastating. This is why the New York Times is freaking out this morning, because we just got our new uh, September numbers on the economy. So they're saying, you know, that the hurricanes, the strikes, right? The, uh, we, of course, we had the port strikes, the war, the economy on the economy. They're all bad, bad narratives for the Harris campaign. But what's worse, though, are the inflation numbers that we just got out today, and they are not helping. So the Harris campaign right now keeps repeating that the economy is good, that you're fine. Even though all of the prices you're paying for everything is up 20%, you're fine. Your energy costs are fine. You don't actually feel it. It's kind of bizarre, right? I mean, it's like, like if you feel sick, someone's like, no, no, you, you, you feel healthy. Like, no, I feel sick. I've got a sore throat. I, I feel feverish. No, you're fine. So they want you to believe that in order to get Kamala Harris elected. Um, the Harris campaign keeps repeating all of this, that the economy is good, that it's getting better. And of course, she, she told uh, Stephen Colbert last week uh, that everything is fine. The Americans feel is not what actually the numbers show. That's what she told Stephen Colbert. Well, now we have the numbers, folks. So she was lying once again. The new inflation numbers show a 2.4% increase in inflation in September, which is higher than what economists were hoping for, which was 2.3%. So it's higher once again. The only thing that has gone down a little bit over the last 12 months is energy costs. But when you remove energy, it's actually the inflation number is closer to 4%. Yeah. The Brown Institute points out that the government metrics for inflation suffer from various problems which tend to underestimate the rise in prices over time. They say that these shortcomings have been more pronounced over the last four years during a relatively rapid depreciation of the currency. So the bit of the economy that they're bragging about right now the most is joblessness. Okay, the joblessness is down. But that's because they've added so many government jobs. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like all of the jobs they've created are government jobs, which means the government has expanded and the federal debt will continue to skyrocket to absorb all of that. Stunning. So how can the Harris campaign answer for this to undecided voters? Well, this is actually how the Times expressed their not-so-subtle worry that you can't package this campaign um, in a new face and just get away with it. This is how the New York Times described it. Ms. Harris, a long-risk-averse politician, has tried to both claim Mr. Biden's accomplishments as her own while defining herself as the future and the 81-year-old president as the past. She barely mentions the president's name in her campaign speeches and makes a middle-class pitch that aims to correct for inflation and high prices voters blame on Biden's economic stewardship. This week's events, though, thrust Ms. Harris' balancing act of being both the number two to Mr. Biden atop the ticket in her own right back into the spotlight. Basically, the world is spiraling out of control right now. In fact, the Brownstone Institute tries to get beyond the government-published statistics and control for all manner of things, such as regulations, housing prices, insurance premiums, which have all skyrocketed. Many of you have felt those as well. Income, GDP growth, all of that. They find that this inflation number is woefully insufficient. So even at 2.4%, that's a lie, right? And even if you remove energy from this and say that it's 4%, those numbers are a lie. That is way higher than that. In fact, much, much higher, um, upwards of even 17% is where we're at. This is absolutely devastating. So the wars, um, all of these things, the wars, the sanctions, the, the regulations, uh, have all been absolutely devastating. So this is worse, arguably, they say, the Brown Institute, than even the 2008 crisis. So though again, they're trying to not even talk about it. The mainstream media is totally ignoring the story. They don't want you to be aware of it. They're trying to pretend that this doesn't exist. But how many of you are suffering terribly right now.
We'll get back to that video in a minute, but first, I need to tell you about a golden opportunity for investors that's happening right now. Mortgage rates have plummeted in anticipation of the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates at their upcoming meeting in September. Now, it's good news for buyers, and it has presented a unique overlap in the investing world right now. Remember, when mortgage rates spiked last year, well, a lot of sellers started offering incentives to help investors achieve positive cash flow. For example, my company, Morris Invest, and our our team over at Sidera Wealth started offering clients a rate buy-down credit. Now, a rate buy-down drastically reduces your mortgage payment. Now, if you've ever run the numbers on an investment property, you know that's a big deal. Now, here's where the golden opportunity comes in. When mortgage rates change, it can take a while for other things like seller incentives to start catching up. So even though you can get a mortgage rate in the low sixes right now, and that could be even lower by the time you're seeing this video, right now you can also lock in a rate buy-down credit on top of that. And this is huge, people, huge. With the two combined, our team's finance expert said he's seeing our clients locking in rates he hasn't seen in years. But here's the catch. The window of opportunity here is very narrow. This overlap will close very soon. So those seller incentives are going to fall off very, very soon. There are two more reasons to move quickly on this. One, prices are rising week over week. And now that rates are going down, they're going to spike even more dramatically, which will be made worse by two increasing competition. Potential buyers have been sitting on the sidelines just waiting for rates to drop. And now that they have, they're going to flood the market, reproduce bidding wars, pushing prices even higher. If you need a refresher on the advantages of owning real estate, like how it delivers four streams of income through number one, appreciation and equity gains, number two, principal reduction by your tenants, number three, tax benefits and depreciation, and number four, cash flow. I'll link another video in the description so you can check that out. But if you've done your research and you already understand why build to rent properties in high growth rental markets are a great path to financial freedom, then take action right now. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity to fast track your investing strategy. Cash in on this narrow overlap of lower rates and seller incentives while it's here. Click the link below and schedule a free call right now. It could be the most important call you make this year. And the other piece we didn't even mention is that most of the jobs in the new jobs report that came out were uh, illegal immigrant jobs. So illegal immigrants replacing American workers and Americans losing full time jobs in order to, which are being replaced with part time jobs. And those long time full time jobs are being replaced by non U.S. citizens. Yes, illegal immigrants in the United States. This is absolutely devastating. So. You want your October surprise, here it is, in the flesh, and they can't deny it any longer. This is why Kamala Harris's campaign is going down in flames very, very quickly. Uh, new polls out today. National polls show Trump up by five points nationally. And even in battleground states from Pennsylvania to North Carolina, Virginia, um, are all showing signs that Trump is pulling ahead significantly. That's why over the past 24 hours, the Harris campaign has been actively trying to see if they could do another televised debate. Um, and uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, she had already turned down a Fox News debate. Um, any kind of favorable media that they were doing the last time was on you know, ABC and, uh, and, of course, the other networks. So... President Trump saying, I'm not going to be a part of this anymore. I'm not going to be a part of your CNN debate. No way. You already turned down a Fox News debate. I'm not going to do it. And it would only help Kamala. Like to give her a debate on television would only help her. And so Trump's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. You, you continue to shoot yourself in the foot and I'm going to step back in this. So it's really fascinating to watch right now. But here's your October surprise, guys. It's not a war. It's a confluence of all of this, but it's at the heart of it, it is the economy. Let me know what you guys are experiencing down below in terms of prices. You know, what are you guys seeing in terms of energy prices in your family, insurance premiums, the cost of just everyday groceries? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and we'll see you next time, everyone.